Okay, let's see what the write-up on the back of this album has to say. Be forewarned. Used to be an experience meant making you a bit older. This one makes you wider. Okay, so I know I've gained a little bit of weight over the last year and a half, but who hasn't? And way to make it personal, Mr. Album Blurb Write-Up Guy. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. As you can see, I've got the record cleaning set up here in front of me, uh, so it's time for another Rescue Records episode. Now, I'm not always going to show the record cleaning part of the thing uh, in a Rescue Records video, but I've decided this was a special occasion, and I wasn't necessarily ready to do another Rescue Records, not that I don't enjoy the feature. Uh, I've only done one episode so far, but I'm really in enjoying it. But, uh, as I said, a special circumstance. I wanted to show you guys the process from when I get the records, bring them home, and clean them, until after I've listened to them. And I'm going to do that, as I said, with two very special records today. Things that I could not believe I actually found on the freebie shelf. And you might be amazed and jealous, but uh, then again, you probably won't be so jealous, because, as you'll see by the conditions of these records, they were on the freebie shelf for a reason. First of all, we've got Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix. And, yeah, fantastic. And, yes, The Wall by Pink Floyd is, was on the freebie shelf. And But as you can see here, the uh, jacket is absolutely all sorts of damage, water damage, wrinkles, uh, stains and stuff. Uh, and uh, some of the seams are a little bit split. Uh, the inside, the gatefold, is in pretty good condition except for, you know, some water stains. These must, the records must have gotten wet at some point. And I don't know if the uh, condition of the records will show up very well on camera, but I thought I would show you. And here's another reason why it was on the freebie shelf. Uh, looks like an original jacket, but uh, all four of the seams are split uh, to varying degrees. And I have no idea if these were original pressings or not. I am not that much of a record geek, so uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But uh, yeah, here is the Jimi Hendrix record. Uh, I'm going to try and show it to you guys. Uh, maybe the light reflecting uh, we'll give you the best view of it. Uh, it's The surface of the record is pretty dull. Uh, lots of blemishes and scratches, let's let's face it. I don't know, none of them really look deep enough to affect play, so I'm kind of hoping... Oh, there, there's a good shot, as you can, you can kind of see the condition of the record. So yes, uh, my main objective with these is, uh, you know, obviously I want to listen to them, duh, their records, hello. Um, so hopefully these will play without uh, incident. So, yes, uh, the spin, spin Clean record cleaning system is pretty darn amazing. I've gotten nothing but excellent results on this. Um, and, yeah, what you do is you fill the reservoir with two and three quarters-ish cups of water. That brings it to about the fill line. And a couple of capfuls of, I put the bottle away, but the Spin Clean record cleaning solution, that, that dilutes into the water. And then you give the record usually three revolutions each way. I'm doing more than that because these records are pretty filthy. Forgot to mention in the last Spin Clean demo, uh, when you've got some really dirty records, you want to save those to the until the last in the record cleaning session that you're doing with one reservoir full of solution because obviously the dirtier the records are, the dirtier the water will get, so you want to save the dirty records till the end. So. And I'm giving these probably, I've lost count, probably five or six revolutions just because I want to get them extra clean, or try to anyway. And then, yeah, you pull it out just enough so that it still sits upright, so it gives a couple seconds for the water to drain into the reservoir. And yeah, as you can see, the uh, jacket here on the Jimi Hendrix is pretty much split on all three sides except for the top. So yes, and since these records are not going to be any of any value uh, selling, probably for resale, I'm just going to use some clear packing tape to uh, reseal the seams, and these are going to be placeholders until, assuming I like the records enough, until I get better condition copies of them. So, yes. But yes, the Jimi Hendrix ex experience, uh, Are You Experienced? I have never heard the actual album, though. I've got a CD of Hendrix's greatest hits. I mean, in my opinion, that's one thing that every uh, music lover should have in their collection, is at least a Hendrix comp. But uh, yeah, I've never heard this album specifically. When it's a generic sleeve, not specific to the record, I usually end up just throwing it out 
unless it's a rare con uh, rare occasion where it's in a record in extremely good condition, original pressing, which I usually wouldn't know if it's an original pressing, uh, and it might somehow add to the record's value, I might hang on to it, but otherwise, you know, 95% of the time, I switch it out with uh, a new sleeve, one of my uh, poly sleeves, 4 mil plastic poly sleeves. And so this is, should be drained plenty by now. Uh, take the record out and just kind of wag that last little bit of water back down into the, into the reservoir. And then I blot it with this one of the rags provided by Spin Clean on both sides of the record just to get any excess standing water off of it. And then I put it into this handy dandy little drying rack right here. So it can dry its little self away. And then onto the wall. This is one of my friend's uh, favorite albums of all time, a friend of mine. He absolutely loves it, uh, and so I've always I've been wanting to listen to it for a long time. And now I will hopefully get the chance to. And yes, it's got it's still got the picture sleeves, but they are really not in any better condition than the outer jacket as well. So, and yes, seam splits on pretty much all three sides and wrinkles and whatnot. So yes, though I will save the sleeves, I will not re-sleeve these records into those sleeves. I'll just keep them tucked into the jacket. Yeah, not a lot of uh, scratches, significant scratches on this record. I mean, the surface of the record is not pretty, but I don't really see anything that I think would interfere with play. There is one scratch on uh, this side right here that may uh, interfere with play. So, But hey, if the records don't play, they cost me zero dollars and zero cents, so I am not complaining. Meantime, enjoy the rattling of the records in the drying rack as I'm uh, And you're welcome to borrow that noise as a percussion uh, track in a, any song that your guys are doing. You're, you have my permission. Anyway, and as I mentioned before, I have still, to this day, I've only had one label get a little bit wet with just a, just a little bit water, because 95% of the water follows the grooves and goes around the label when it drips down into the basin. So, yay physics! Yeah, the top and bottom seams are not split, it's just the uh, spine is not pretty, and neither is most of the record of the rest of the outer jacket. Yes, it, these had to have gotten wet at some point by their previous owner. This is probably going to be a Rescue Records video that just talks about records. Uh, my, in my first one I talked about CDs and tapes too that I rescued off the freebie shelf, but uh, yeah, I think we'll kind of just concentrate on records just because this is a, as a, the way I'm doing this video is an experiment. So uh, yeah, the, the record doesn't look a whole lot better. I mean, it looks cleaner. The, the surface gunk is off of it, but uh, the spin clean can only do so much. It just takes the dirt off the records. You know, if, you know, those scratches and blemishes that were on the records to start with, they're not going to magically disappear. So, and yes, uh, same thing with this uh, jacket. I mean, the entire bottom seam is completely split open. So, yes, as I said, I will save <clears throat> that uh, the sleeves and just keep them in the jacket, but keep the records in new sleeves. Actually, this one does not appear to have any scratches that would be deep enough to affect play to to cause the record to skip. So, that's what I'm hoping. Because I have heard, I have heard nothing but great things about this record. Uh, I am not much for concept albums, so that's going to be my only fear, I guess you'd say, in listening to this. Is uh, it is very difficult for me usually to get into concept albums, rock operas, that kind of thing. So, but we'll see. I mean, I, I am not knocking Pink Floyd. They are a legendary rock band for a reason. Some of you guys might cringe, but then I only did this because of the condition that their jackets are in. As I said, these are way too bad uh, condition to ever go uh, be sold again for any any significant amount of money. So uh, there was some a smell of mildew on both the Hendrix and the Pink Floyd. And that's pretty much gone now. So what I did was I sprayed them very, very lightly with Lysol. I don't know if that damages the, the paper. It, it didn't seem to anyway, but yeah, just to try and get the mildew smell off of it, sprayed very lightly with Lysol on all four sides, the front, the back, and the gatefold. Jimi Hendrix is not a gatefold, so I just did the front and back, and then wiped it with a dry rag. So that uh, took care of the smell, so it, it didn't make the jacket look much prettier. So if anybody has a more uh, precision method for cleaning the outer jackets, 
uh, lay it on me in the comment section. And you know, for more valuable records, I would use that method, obviously. As I said, don't soak the freaking thing with Lysol. Just give it a nice, uh, uh, hold the jacket like this and just spray it like six inches, eight inches above it. Just spray and let the Lysol uh, particles fall onto it. Lysol particles, droplets, whatever they're called. Anyway, so yes, I dab this one dry. And now we'll be waiting for the, the rest of the water to evaporate off the surface of the records. Then what I do is I take microfiber cloths, lay one out flat on the surface, to put the record on top of, and then I use another one, uh, it's folded in half basically, and just give one uh, revolution on each side just to get rid of any lint or you know any standing dust or whatever off of the surface of the record. And then take the handy dandy sleeves, find the open end, which is usually a good thing, and then the record into the sleeve and that's that so anyway yes that concludes my before segment my quick little rehash of my record cleaning process and stay tuned very quickly for the after segment coming up in just a few seconds in which uh, at which time I will have listened to Jimi Hendrix's Are You Experienced and Pink Floyd's The Wall to give you my thoughts on them I cannot wait to listen to those albums just to see if the hype and the build-up and the anticipation was worth the wait. I've, I'm, as I said, very eager to listen to those two, so stay tuned. Turn the camera off. <laughs> well, it has been about 24 hours. Well, actually, it's been more like, what, 30 hours ish, but whatever, uh, since I cleaned those records in the first segment I just showed you. And I just a couple hours ago finished listening to them both, and now it's time to tell you guys what I think. Uh, but before I get started on what I actually think of the albums, one thing I forgot to show you guys was what the albums look like after their cleaning. Now, I had meant to do that in the first segment, but I uh, forgot to. So, And uh, yeah, as you can see, as I mentioned, the, uh, the surface of all three of the records were pretty dull from their years of, I wouldn't quite say abuse, but, uh, you know, just, just basic wear and tear that pretty much all records that are not, you know, handled with kid gloves will come out uh, with. And there was actually, uh, you might be able to see it in the last segment, but there were a couple of stubborn fingerprints on side two, which is what you're seeing now, of the Jimi Hendrix LP, and I actually had to spot clean those with the spray-on solution and a uh, microfiber cloth, and that is kind of my backup cleaning method for those. But yeah, I got those off, and the record honestly played pretty darn well. Uh, there were actually, believe it or not, no skips on any of these three LPs, either the single Jimi Hendrix or the double LP of Pink Floyd's The Wall. No skips at all. And also, as you can see, I repaired the record jacket. Uh, it was uh, barely holding on by only the top seam, as you recall in the last segment of the video, but yeah, I used uh, clear strapping tape to uh, tape up all three edges. So, you know, it's, there may have been a cleaner and uh, more refined method of doing so, but hey, this is probably not going to resell for anything more than 50 cents or a dollar because the record is not in great condition or nor is the sleeve you know but hey a great stopgap measure and I, I applied the tape very carefully so unless you really look at it you can't really tell so yeah there was some surface noise uh, side two of are you experienced was uh, a little bit uh, noisier than side one there was actually almost virtually no surface noise on side one of this lp so you know that coupled with the fact there were no skips it's like you know I hit the gold mine. This, take this word literally, okay? It is an experience listening to this album. And as I mentioned uh, in the first segment, it is my it was my first full album experience with Jimi Hendrix, and it is a, f a fantastic one. I've got to tell you, you've probably already listened to this album at some point, but if you haven't, you've got to trust me. Uh, I mean, it, it opens with the triple whammy of Purple Haze, Manic Depression, and Hey Joe. And it ends with the double whammy of Foxy Lady and Are You Experienced? I mean, I don't need to say any more about this album, but I will. 
Uh, the Wind Cries Mary, that's the opener on side two. Fantastic song. I love that one. And uh, probably my, one of my favorite tracks on here uh, is May This Be Love. I would actually rank it on this album in my top three favorite tracks, ranking it above some of the classics only because it, it was a fresh track to me. I had never heard it before, not knowingly anyway. But yeah, gorgeous song. I love that one, uh, May This Be Love. And Third Stone from the Sun. That was a cool one. I, I That was one, another one of my favorites. It is six and a half minutes of abstract psychedelic weirdness, which, I mean, you know, kind of, it, it's kind of to be expected, well, I guess in a way to be expected from Jimi Hendrix, or at least from the 60s. Uh, yes, yeah, he was a, a master of the psychedelic rock guitar. Listen to this album, and that's all the proof that you need for the uh, almost immortal, basically immortal status that Jimi Hendrix holds in the world of rock music. I mean, this was, as I said, my first full album, studio album experience with Jimi Hendrix, but it will not be my last. I can easily see myself, if any of the rest of his albums live up to this one, I can see myself accumulating his studio albums and getting rid of the uh, compilation CD, cause, since I won't need it anymore. But uh, yes, this, I mean, it plays fine, so it serves its purpose as, you know, for hearing the music, but I'm definitely going to, this is going to be a placeholder for a better condition copy. I'm going to keep my eyes open for a, a much better quality copy of this. But uh, yes, I've got to say, this is going to rank up there with my favorite classic album experiences or introductions, I guess you'd say, of the entire year. Uh, if this were a Backtrack Spotlight album, I can hardly see, see this uh, not being number one in my year-end countdown, but I'm not doing backtracks this year, so... But yes, this definitely gets recognition. I'm probably going to at least talk about my favorite album experiences overall in my during my list season, and you can expect to hear about this one. Just amazingly awesome album. You've got to hear it if you haven't yet. Trust me, you've got to. Okay, now, on to the one that probably most of you guys have been waiting for me to talk about. It is The Wall by Pink Floyd. Yes, one of the all-time classic albums in rock and roll history, yada, yada, yada. You've heard all the accolades before, and I cannot say that the accolades are not undeserved. Uh, but And hopefully you guys have all heard this album by now. I actually hadn't until this morning. Yes, uh, this, I've, I've only listened to this album once all the way through, uh, just a few hours ago, so keep that in mind as I talk about this uh, album. That's why you won't hear me gushing about it quite yet. Uh, I did not, you know, full confession time, I did not enjoy this album on first listen quite as much as I enjoyed Are You Experienced by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Uh, and and I, know, I know full well that this is an album that is going to demand multiple listens, and I am prepared to listen to this album multiple times. This one isn't going anywhere. One of my close friends, this is, I don't know if it's his favorite album, but it is one of his favorite albums of all time, and he had been con trying to compel me for a couple of years now to listen to it at some point, and I suppose I could have streamed it. Uh, all this time, but I never did. So it took me finding it on the freebie shelf to actually finally put it on the, the old player and spin it and give it a spin. And I've got to say, uh, of all of the classic rock acts that I have been familiarizing myself with over the last few years, uh, Led Zeppelin, and I'm sure there's another one, Pink Floyd is the one that has been most difficult for me to get into. I'm not sure why. It's probably the, to be honest, uh, the reputation that Pink Floyd has intimidates me. And this is something I've talked about before also, and it it's intimidates me to the uh, degree that I always hesitate to listen to one of their albums for fear that I won't get it. And But I am slowly beginning to overcome that, because I kind of had the same thing with Pink, with uh, Led Zeppelin, and I've really gotten to, know, to enjoy Led Zeppelin. I've got four of their albums, and I'm loving them to death. But hopefully I will begin to warm to uh, Pink Floyd uh, as I have to Led Zeppelin over the years. So, uh, but yes, Wonderful album, I've got to say, and again, as with the Jimi Hendrix experience, uh, no warping, I forgot to mention that with uh, Hendrix, but also no skips on either of the two LPs on this on this set. Uh, there was more surface noise on the second LP than on the first, which uh, it kind of stands to reason because if the previous owner of this record was anything like me, the second LP, the second half of the composition was my favorite of the two. So... Uh, it's, it probably got played more often, which would imply, you know, give the reason why it was they had more surface noise and more scuffing and stuff. But uh, I probably would have gone by the default choice of uh, the, what I guess is the title track, uh, Another Rick in the Wall. Uh, all three parts, incidentally, I love those. Uh, I would have gone with that as my favorite track on the album uh, until I listened to Comfortably Numb. Love that song. That's one of my favorites on the entire set. 
excellent, excellent song. And uh, there were a couple other ones on side four that I really enjoyed. It was, oh, Run Like Hell and The Trial, of course. I mean, The Trial was kind of like, it's almost like a uh, Stephen Sondheim or Andrew Lloyd Webber might have written that. Just kind of very operatic, very, you know, show tune-ish sort of thing. And another thing I really enjoyed about this album was uh, the fact that the the hook or the motif of Another Brick in the Wall was heard throughout the album on probably must have been 10, 12 songs on the album. You could hear it just in the background kind of. They, they snuck it in there. Uh, so that really tied the album together in a cohesive whole. But yes, I know that there is a movie and I'm sure that there's a concert film as well of The Wall and I'm kind of interested in uh, delving into those. Uh, maybe I will get the album more uh, uh, if I you know have that stuff to, to go on as well. So I, I'm kind of uh, going to definitely check out the film adaptation uh, to get a little bit more context, uh, possibly before I listen to it again, but maybe not. But yeah, I've got to say I was very, um, I'm very gratified to have gotten this, especially for free, uh, you know, not in good condition, but hey, it, it's not going to resell, but how can you complain for zero dollars and zero cents uh, for, for both of these, actually? And so, yeah, this one, uh, obviously, I have to give it more listens to see if it grows on me or not. Uh, yeah, Floyd has been, as I said, a little bit difficult for me to uh, really absorb and glom onto, but uh, I've got to say, I do not have the least regret for taking me, what is it, uh, two hours, hour and a half to listen to this album. I'm going to do it again uh, at least a few times. And I've got to say, this was one of the, uh, this trip to House of Records last Friday was one of the most productive ones ever that I got to, you know, those two albums free off the freebie shelf. And I also got a couple of things that I actually bought uh, for, that I was looking for as well. So yeah, I got to say, I am, I am extraordinarily um, fortunate over the last couple of years for a lot of the freebies finds that I found and for other stuff. So yeah. Well, that'll do it for this special edition of Rescue Records. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.